Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to Ready, Set, Live. My special guest today is an author, an actress, a health advocate, and someone who is a spiritual, I would say, uh, I would say I would call her an icon, uh, and uh, in her own words, and I want to introduce a really longtime friend, Gina Lee Nolan. Welcome, Gina. Oh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. This is awesome. What you, a great intro, you icon. Know, you know, um, I know that you've had such a, uh, a really uh, interesting career that you have had so many experiences. Um, and what, what, what do you look at now that you're, because you don't live in Los Angeles, which is sometimes a blessing because you have a whole separate world and you have kids, you're a mom, you're an author, um, and you just are always, you know, I, I believe you're always in the mindset of awareness and growth. And I think that's what's great about you is you're someone that sort of lets everything flow instead of trying to run the business. Um, mm -hmm. how, what have you learned, um, not, not really trying to push the business, but letting the business come to you? I think that it, you know, early on in my career, I, I wasn't really looking to become famous. I wasn't looking, uh, for stardom. So when it, when it came, you know, when it hit me so fast, that I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. I just rolled with it. I guess flowing, really, um, with one project to the next. And I think that what I learned about it is, you know, easy come, easy go. Uh, so I just, I learned to just be patient and not to rush to make things happen. Um, because when I was in that flow, things happened. I mean, they happen fast. Absolutely. So, you know, moving forward in my life, I chose to leave the business because I, I had a son who was four and I was kind of over it. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I wanted like a normal life. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want a call sheet. I don't want to be in a, in a makeup chair at 3.30 in the morning. So I I think that just moving out of LA and, and really just finding my peace uh, it just really helped immensely. And and if people don't know your background, I mean, you started off as a, the price is right model. I mean, yeah. that was great. Yeah. You were like, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> then, then you went on to Young and the Restless. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you went on to Baywatch, which brought yeah. you international acclaim. I yeah. mean, everybody yeah. knows Baywatch. Uh, yeah. And then you went into Sheena, the Jungle Queen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then, like and, I, I have all these like uniforms, yes, you know, just <laughs> everything that I, I don't know. It, and, and like I said, it, it's so interesting, Gary, because I wasn't, you know, I quit Baywatch. I tried to quit after season one and they wouldn't let me out of my contract. They're like, no, you, you can't quit. You're <laughs> popular. <laughs> right. Your character is going to marry Mitch right. and, you know, David Hasselhoff. And I'm thinking, no, I, I this isn't what I want. Um, I think that it was the fame and it was just too much too fast. But um, luckily, it wasn't in the social media, you know, time as it is today, because I really feel for these kids that are, you know, just thrusted into fame so quickly. Um, but what yeah, would you tell times. what would you tell young actors or people with your experience? Um, what what are some tips that they might, you know, because they are thrust mm -hmm. all of a sudden on every mm -hmm. magazine or on, on, on the screen. And then all of a sudden nobody knows them. And the next thing you know, they're so famous. Yeah. What what's a tip or what what's the what's the the grounding that you should tell these kids to look out for? I would say don't take yourself seriously, really, truly. It's it's important um, because I was in the tabloids, you know, every week and people magazine and entertainment tonight. I mean, it was just extra, it, it was constant and it's easy to sort of go, Hmm, wow, I look pretty good there. But I think that it's important to really ground yourself and realize that you're a show away 
from not being famous. And, um, you know, I think a lot of kids kind of, you know, kind of roll with this feed that it's going to last forever. And I, I always knew, I don't know if it's just, I'm an old soul or what, but I, I sort of knew that this wasn't my forever and that was okay with me. So that I think that it's just really important to ground yourself and just not take it seriously. Take the, the work seriously, be professional, be on time. Um, those are, I'm stickler for, Correct. but, but, you know, just, it's just noise. And, and I think also, because I know you've really worked on your spiritual path over the years of really being in gratitude. And I think people nowadays, a lot of young kids or some, some of them, the ego takes over. And I think the yeah. ego is the dangerous part, you know. For sure. Oh, my gosh. You know, we all have the ego. I mean, the ego is, is just, it's, it's always kind of sort of floating along. It's just how we maneuver it, how we use it. Um, and some are destructive with it. And, and some, you know, use it in, in different, you know, ways um, and in, in good ways. But I think there's that balance. I always call it the yin yang that just sort of, I don't know, I, I, I can toot my horn or have a, you know, a great, you know, week or month or whatever, and everything's going great. And then just like everybody else, you kind of have those days where you don't feel great. You don't look that great. Right. <laughs> you just you have a bad day. Right. And, um, you know, so, so ego is interesting to me. I, I find it. Yeah. It's, it's sort of, um, as I've matured and, I'm almost, oh my gosh, I'm almost 50. I think about, uh, like I said, it's just going with the flow and it's hard. There's right. times where it's, it's not easy getting older, but. Um, is there any, is there any health rituals or, and cause I know, and we'll talk about thyroid sexy, the book, mm -hmm. but, um, is there anything that you do as a ritual when you have a day that you sort of feel, oh, okay, I don't feel a hundred percent me or I'm having a mm -hmm. low, what sort of pushes you out of that or makes you sort of shift in the consciousness? I think meditation. Okay. I, I really allow myself time every morning to just be still and to realize that my body is just feeling the way it is. And I might, you know, I might be out of balance, whatever it is that's causing me to feel the way I'm feeling, lack of sleep, whatever. Um, I just, I just, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my health, my children, uh, my family. Uh, and I think that that, especially in our world today, I mean, I can't go into the studio with you today Correct. because of this pandemic. Correct. And it's, it's really it's hard. hard for people to, to center themselves and to, um, you know, remain calm, have that, that calm about and that. And I so think, I, I, I think, Gina, I mean, during this time, I believe that this pandemic has really brought a lot of things forward for people as far as what doesn't work in their lives mm -hmm. or it's, it's made them stop. And I think, right. look at themselves. Um, have you had any epiphanies during this time? Because you haven't been able to also go out or I mean, you know, your right. kids are, 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 are grown up, some of them, but you have little ones. Um, I think uh, my patients have been pushed <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to know to, to limits that I didn't know were possible. Right. Um, it's one thing to have toddlers, but when you have like preteen and teen and you're homeschooling them um, and, and you don't get eighth grade math, because it's different than the way we learned it. Right. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think that uh, patience definitely has been probably the first and foremost. But you know what? A lot of good has kind of come with it because I'm a stickler for, you know, keeping everybody in and masks and, you know, washing their hands and all of that. Um, but we've cooked. I've learned how to, I'm not like a, you know, it doesn't come naturally to, me, <laughs> you know, to just whip up a meal. So, my daughter and I are cooking and baking and, um, 
uh, finding smoothie recipes and just having that bonding time that you wouldn't because when you're in the, the hustle of life and they're at school and then they, you know, they have hockey or soccer or whatever it is, you just lose that um, uh, intimacy. Correct. And I know, you know, we talked about, you know, also mind, body, spirit of, of balancing oneself, of having a, a positive mindset, but also a healthy body. And mm-hmm. I know that you had some health issues a while yeah. back, and I know that was the catalyst to write the book. And, and I know the book, mm-hmm. uh, you know, was originally, it's beautiful inside and out, but it's really right. uh, thyroid sexy because it was a thyroid issue, right, that you had a problem right. with? Yeah. You know, I, looking back, hindsight's always twenty twenty. You just, you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, this, I, I felt this way when I was 25, 27, I remember feeling this way. Um, so it all kind of stems back from about 27, 28 years old. And then I really started getting sick around 31, 32. Um, ignored it. The doctors ignored it. Nothing was wrong with me. I was perfectly healthy. And then after my uh, second baby, I just bal- I literally ballooned up. Uh, for, I mean, I was working out with a trainer. I was eating um, very, very healthy, working with a nutritionist. And I wouldn't lose a pound. And finally, a doctor said, your, your TSH and your levels, your thyroid le- levels are completely off the charts. And, you know, we need to address this. And I, I didn't even know where the thyroid was. There was a time where I was like Googling and trying to figure out what was going on with my body. Anyway, I hit an all time low, I think, just overall with the weight gain and uh, the moods and thinning hair and just horrible, horrible uh, symptoms. And no one understood. I mean, it was hard for my husband to understand. I mean, he, he cared, but he didn't know what to do for me. And I'll never forget one day, I mean, the sun was just coming through the window and I had my laptop and I'm like, I need, I need help. I need support. And I got onto Facebook and I said, I'm going to create a page. Maybe if I go anonymous, you know, just I'll think of a name and someone can help me. Um, and that's when I came up with thyroid sexy. I think I was at that time, like 180 pounds and, and, and that's working out and eating right. So uh, I was just devastated and, um, I started thyroid sexy. I think it was a little bit of a rebellious pun because sexy is certainly not what I felt, but I was kind of pissed off because my whole career, I had to be this sexy girl. Um, so, and I, and I wasn't that, but anyway, I started the page and it is just a movement. It's like there again, Gary, there it goes with the flow where, I was introduced to Mary Showman, who's a New York Times bestseller, times like 15. Um, and she wanted to collaborate with me. She's, I want to hear your story. I want it. People want to hear your story. So it was, it was interesting, like to just kind of let everything. And, and it, it's a great book. And it went number one on Amazon. Yes. And, yep. you know, it's still for sale. I think anybody who has any health issues, I I, I recommend it uh, for them. Simon and Schuster published it, but mm-hmm. I also feel like you know you have become your own health advocate, and I think yes. that's so important. Um, it is, you know, and it's something I always say: if something doesn't feel right, it's not. It's mm-hmm. just it. It's simple, and you need to listen. And we all have that inner voice. We all have that, uh, just that intuition, sort of, you know. Uh, Men typically don't listen or they're stubborn and they don't want to go in. And there's a lot of women like that as well. But uh, just don't take no for an answer. Keep going. Keep researching. And, um, yeah, I just, what was when the you know greatest, something doesn't feel Yeah, right, what was just, the greatest gift in the book that you want to share, that you shared, that was the takeaway for people um, that you say, wow, this was, this was a nugget of wisdom? Yes. Okay. So I had just had Spencer and I was, uh, I was in, I can't remember what grocery store it was. It was like, I, I, well, anyway, I don't even know what Bristol farms. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's been so long since I've been there. Right. <laughs> so, so anyway, 
I had my baby in, in the carrier and I was behind these two women and they had like their little aerobic pants on and they looked amazing. And I'm just like, I'd be tired and you know, whatever. And I overheard them talking. They're like, is that that Baywatch girl? She looks awful. She looks terrible. Oh my God. And they went, they went on and on. And I was like, I'm right behind you. Like, and I have my baby and like, what, like, that's why I'm so about this women supporting women. And this goes back to 97. Right. I was devastated. I brought my groceries. I don't even remember getting to my car. I put Spencer in, in his car seat. Luckily he was sleeping and I sat and I bawled my eyes out. Like there is no tomorrow. It was like this epiphany. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I cared what they thought, right, but it was right. just maybe because I knew it was true. Correct. But I just had a baby. Correct. I don't know. Correct. So Correct. That was that was a biggie. Well, also I think it also pushed you to another level of you having to um go within and really uh, you know, find out what what you're made out of, you know, yeah. and and go within is always um in a spiritual mindset you know, you awaken to where you are in your level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you've done lots of work. What was the um, the epiphany that happened for you to get into the spiritual world? Meaning, I know you're an empath, you're very connected, you're very intuitive, you've always been that. But I think you're yeah. moving into this f sort of a, a, an energy of, of being very tuned in. Yes, uh, extremely. You know, it's something I didn't talk about um, for years. Uh, I was seven years old and, and something happened. And, and I, I grew up in a very conservative home, um, church every Sunday. Um, you know, you didn't talk really about anything other than, you know, saying your prayers at night and, and that type of thing. But it, it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't a scary thing. It's just something happened where I, it didn't, I knew more than, I think the the person, you know, the, the average person, I should say, it was just, I felt like I was gifted with something. So through the years, um, I sort of suppressed that because I was afraid. I didn't want to, you know, people, they don't believe in it or they think it's weird or whatever, but um, yeah, I would read people. I can feel energy. I can see energy. Um, I, yeah. I, well, it's I almost, hear. it's almost, I'm, very... I'm audible. Like I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, people are calling me in my inner circle and they're like, can you, um, can you tell me what my parents would think <laughs> about, uh, and I said, don't tell me the names because I hear, I hear uh -huh. when I'm connected, uh -huh. when I, when the download happens and then they're like, yeah, so I'm just, I'm getting all these calls and I, we talked about that and yeah. I'm, I'm not even sure what to do with it. I'm still <laughs> kind of like, you it, know, but it will, I'm now, it will I'm find out, a home. I'm out, I'm out of the closet. Yes. Me, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing was that I was going to ask you was, um, you know, Shirley MacLaine was ahead of her time. So oh. you're kind of in that. She didn't know what she was. And they all thought she was cuckoo back yes. then. She wasn't yes. cuckoo. So it validates what you're going through is actually because I interviewed Shirley and you know, she said, oh, people thought I was crazy. Um, she wasn't. She was just really in tune. And Very. so that's why I feel you're really moving in tune. And I think, you know, I think being in tune also creates more happiness within yourself um, yes. because you're tapped into um, a higher power, whatever that is right. for you. And um, what would you say that why people are so unhappy these days? I think that, I think that people are so consumed and worry about, worried about their image. I think that people are worried about what people think of them. And I, I've really let, personally, I've let all of that go. And when you get to that point, there's such a gratitude for what you do have. Mm -hmm. um, you're not worried about, uh, you know, Susie got a new car or their house is 
uh, you know, three times bigger than my, like, I just, I, I really hone in to what's really important. Um, because all of these things that people are so worried about and find such pain and keeping up with certain things and, or, uh, you know, trying to make everyone happy and that's impossible. You can't, you can't make your mother-in-law like you any more than she does. It's just, you have to really be good with you. Um, and I think that's really truly, and and I think you, you know, what's missing in this world. Yeah. And I think the other thing is people have to learn to love themselves first. Without a doubt. It's, it's self-acceptance. It's that you just, when you love yourself and you love who you are and the choices that you're making and the people that you have around you, life is so simple. It, when it's simple, it's it, the noise, everything just sort of goes away. Yeah. And in, in that, it's not always happy. It's not always easy. Uh, there's there, the, your journey, like I said, it's, there's always those days. But I think the core um, thought process that I have is that I'm just grateful. I have such gratitude for every day. Yeah. And it's the simple things. It's planting, you know, flowers with my, with my kids or baking or, um, you know, going on a date night. Well, or it's not much of a date, but even just driving around the block with my husband. <laughs> I think your am next. I, am I winking? <laughs> um, I, I think your next book should be "Life is Simple." Yeah. And then Simplicity. what you just said a... was exactly how you live your life: authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think yeah. that's what mi- is missing: is the authenticity of self. Yeah. You know, and and you're right. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, I think, you know, today it's just it's really it's hard to really gauge or or have any sort of complete input as to what's going on, because this is so crazy, our world. And there are people that are losing their homes and there's, you know, it's it's, you know, clearly their jobs and. It's just very, very sad. It's a sad state that we're in. There's a lot of sadness. So it's hard to say, well, you know, just, you know, be grateful when I have a beautiful home and I have a beautiful family and we're healthy and, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, it's, I think it's just being compassionate, being compassionate to people uh, and and just um, putting those good vibes out there. Exactly. For everyone hurting. Uh, Gina, if you could go back into time and you could speak to anybody, who would that be and what would you tell them or ask them? Gosh, there's so many. They could be, you know, musicians. They could be, you know, Socrates. They could be Gandhi, anybody. I think Mother Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mother Teresa, she was um, just beautiful in Mm. every way. Mm. Uh, She was so enlightened and so ahead of her time. And she saw the truth and she saw the light in everyone. She she saw it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even in a in, in a in a murderer or somebody that's done the most heinous things. She would find the beauty and that person. And I just, I just get chills thinking about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I could almost cry. Like I, I mean, right. I just, cause she's, she's so angelic and right. Yeah. So I'd be mother Teresa and I would just, Oh, I, I would ask her so many I mean, <laughs> you don't have time for the, you know, in this, in this podcast to Correct. cover what I'd be talking about. <laughs> oh, oh we just, we'd be right. chit chatting. <laughs> Um, when yeah. you when you leave this experience in this lifetime, and I know you've just gone through a, a family passing, um, mm-hmm. how do you want to be remembered? What do you want people to say about Gina Lee Nolan? Um, she was funny. She was um, 
honest, um, compassionate, um, a good mother, um, a great partner. Um, oh gosh. Um, I think really I'm, I'm kind of funny. Like I'm really realizing I'm, I'm like funny, funny. <laughs> like if there's something that I could go back into time uh-huh. and redo, I think I might've done stand up. <laughs> that was... like comedy club. <laughs> like a... I, I am like, nuts and it's I, never, I don't know if it's just it's that I'm, I'm in late. this house I'm you know that I'm yeah 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 like there is I'm not playing with a complete full deck right. so um <laughs> so uh yeah I think I do I love making people happy and just you know making someone laugh yeah yeah well so, I I just adore you and I know my mom you know my mom. I know your mom. Yeah. It's uh, you know so great that we've had this like longevity together, yeah. and I'm always so proud of you. And I know all the things that you're doing, you are inspiring people, if, even if you don't think so, you are. Yeah. Thank you. So. So thank- are you? It's like I always get, when we get back together. Yeah. It's so interesting, and our moms are so similar, by the way. Yeah. Right. Oh, we have to get our moms together. I, know. I don't know what we're waiting for. Exactly. But yeah. So my mom's single. She just, whatever. She just doesn't even want to bother. She's so, <laughs> yeah. So she, you, they would get along. They would perfect. get along. Um, they would. But it's so interesting with you because I will, like, I won't see you or, you know, hear from you or talk to whatever for a couple of years. And it's like, we just connect. Right. It's like, I, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. It's yeah. a beautiful relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a soul grouping, and um, yeah, you're you're an, another beautiful soul sister to me, and I mm. want to thank you. And I know all the great new things that are coming up will always be yeah. great, and we'll be excited yes. to hear about those. And we'll do more interviews and hopefully see each other very soon. And yes. I wish you a great week, and all the best to the family and. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and uh, having this up close and personal time with you. It's uh, it's really wonderful. Oh, I, I'm delighted. I'm so happy to have had this time and to talk to everybody behind the curtain as well. So yes. thanks for having me. Thank you, Gina. And until next time, I'm Gary Quinn. <laughs>